Here's something you probably won't see at the World Cup this year. It's called a goal olimpico. It's a direct goal scored off a corner kick. See how the ball curves? To pull it off, a player needs to kick the ball from the corner of the field and bend it into the goal without the assistance of any other players. They're super rare, and when they do happen, it's usually an accident. I mean, look at this. You're aiming for an opening you can't even see. The only way to do it is to bend the ball. You know, like David Beckham. David Beckham swinging it right in. Goal Olympicos are almost impossible. To find out what makes them so rare, I kicked the ball with an Olympian. Yes! Got some pointers from a pro. A lot of hip motion through the ball. And talked soccer ball aerodynamics with a scientist. So as you start changing the surface, the aerodynamic properties change a little bit, and that affects the flight of the ball. Now, I haven't really played soccer since I was a kid, so I got some tips from Brandi Chastain. She's a two-time Olympic gold medalist and World Cup champion. These days, she's an assistant coach for the women's soccer team at Santa Clara University. Brandy, you scored a few goals in your life, right? A few, once or twice. All right. <laughs> yeah, Chastain scored the game-winning penalty kick that won the World Cup for the U.S. women's team in 1999. She showed me the finer points of bending a corner kick. Well, first I'll ask you, are you left-footed or right-footed? Definitely right-footed. Then we're on the proper corner. One of the first things to do is figure out which way the wind is blowing. You, you recognize that the wind Right? The wind is going to be pushing into the goal. So it's important that you start the ball out just outside of the goal so that the bend will bring it back in. And by bend, do you know what I mean by that? I think you're meaning I need to put some swerve on the ball. Yeah, you need to put a little love, a little texture. Easy enough, right? Ah! You got some things going for you. Good, good noises like that. You got to have a little oomph on it. Uh, you got good bend. Now we just have to make sure that we get you in the right direction. Okay, so my first attempts were not great. Just getting the ball out there was clearly going to be a hurdle. Aim right, and it's gonna come back this way. Oh, come back. Oh. Now it's just the aim. We got the distance, now we just need that swerve. Chastain showed me how she divides the ball into sections so she can kick it with power and precision. The ball can be split into four quadrants and basically then manipulated by by where you hit it. So if you hit the ball straight through the middle, it will have this kind of motion. If you hit the ball underneath, it will have this kind of motion. And likewise, from one side to the other, will have this kind of curving motion. And now, for the tricky part. If you take that and now you create like the third plane, which is you go from one plane up through another plane, now you not only get the spin, but you get the up and then the down. You can basically take the ball and make it turn whatever way you want it to, depending on the placement of your foot on contact. So the ball can do all kinds of amazing things depending on how you strike it. So what do I need to work on? Well, it's not just you, Robbie, what, what you need to work on. It's what all players need to work on, is the, the balance between the force that you put on the ball and the finesse that you you give it, kind of the love that you give the ball. As Chastain says, it's force and finesse. But in scientific terms, it's something called the Magnus effect. If I've got the ball spinning like this, the Magnus effect says if the air is whipped off to the side over here, the air that's being pushed this way has to be pushing the ball in the opposite direction. That's Newton's third law. So if you see a ball coming at you spinning like this, the front part of the ball tells you which way it's going to want to move. So if it's spinning like this, it's going to want to move the direction my finger's showing you. We're basically talking about the effects of spin. It's the same physics behind a curveball in baseball or a slice in golf. It's even used by some basketball players. Without the Magnus effect, there would be no goal Olympicos. Which isn't to say that they're easy to master. I had every advantage when I was trying. The wind was in my favor, there was nobody in the goal box, and I had expert advice on spin from Chastain. Maybe it was the ball. Now, I know what you're thinking. This guy just isn't very good at soccer. And yes, you are totally right. But the ball's design, particularly the number of panels and seams, can make a big difference in the way it flies. Scientists at places like MIT and NASA have actually looked at this. And the issue is something they call roughness. And anyone who remembers the controversial 2010 World Cup Jabulani ball it was exactly what I mean. The reason there was controversy over the Javalani is when you start reducing the number of panels on a ball, 
you run the risk of making it too smooth. Think back to the Magnus effect. Remember how it whips air in the direction of its spin? That's only true for rough balls, ones with lots of panels and seams. But smoother balls, like the Jabulani, they deflect air less consistently. And if the ball is perfectly smooth, it can actually whip air in the opposite direction, producing a reverse Magnus effect. Now, spin isn't the only way to manipulate a ball's flight path. If you want it to move unpredictably, you can kick it with little to no spin. That's called a knuckleball, just like the one in baseball. Chris Weehan, a midfielder for the San Jose Earthquakes, showed us how it's done. Simply uh, come back and strike straight through the ball. Um, and hitting it more with your laces rather than with the inside of your foot is kind of the best way to hit it. You just kind of let the, the seams and, and the design of the ball kind of do the magic. So if you kick the ball right through the center of the ball, right through its center mass, you're going to have it come off the boot with very little spin. And if it's got just a little bit of spin, you can alternate where those smoother or rougher areas are on the side. And as it starts to separate with the boundary layer delayed on the rough side, that means it's going to want to move toward the rough side. So you can get this wobble happening when the ball has a little bit of turn in it. And that wobble can be an advantage for penalty kicks. But back to my quest to kick the elusive goal Olympico. Oh, Chastain <laughs> brought in a ringer to show me a few Come more on, things. Come on, Kelsey. This is Kelsey Turnbow. She was our Hi. WCC hey, Freshman Player of the Year. She also happens to play with our, our one of our youth national teams here for the U.S. Technically, she's a lefty, but she can do this right-footed as well. Turnbow definitely had better form than me yeah. and better finesse. Plus, she can kick with both feet, she can really bend the ball towards the goal, and her shots went in. After dozens of tries, I finally managed to kick a goal Olympico myself. All right, so it bounced a bit, and it was hardly under game conditions. The goal was wide open. So if you see one in a game, remember that the reason they're so rare is that all the skill and science of soccer have to come together perfectly. And that's why they're almost impossible. When you look at the elite players, they, they, ha they naturally will factor those things in because they've done it multiple times. They understand the elements and they understand the circumstance and when it is the right time and when it's not the right time. And if it isn't the right time, you'll absolutely, you'll see it. Yeah. You'll, you'll see the outcome because it won't be close. And when it is the right time, it's a thing of beauty.